Hey, this is Kat from Red Mountain Shaman, and I share shamanic wisdom through dreams, visions, nature, synchronicities, intuition, channeling, art, music, photography, and shamanic journeys. Welcome back to my channel. So before I get into today's episode, I have an important announcement that my phone has been out of commission for the last week or so. So the screen is totally black. I cannot uh, return people's messages and I did get a new phone. It finally came in the mail yesterday. But unfortunately, uh, when I put the SIM card in, uh, not everything transferred over. So I don't have access to anybody's messages that they've left. So I'm not ignoring you. If you would like to book a session with me, you're going to need to contact me again because um, of this issue. So now I can get messages, but I, I don't have any access to the old ones, as I said. So that being said, um, so my mother's funeral was this week. And someone in the comments said that they looked forward to hearing about my interactions with my mom from the other side, um, since uh, my psychic abilities are pretty wide open. Um, so I'll be sharing my first interaction with her today, as well as a channeled message from Mother Mary and a card that Mother Mary uh, wanted me to share with you that I feel like her energy kind of pulled. And a new thing I'd like to maybe try to start doing is sharing a crystal of the week that, that I'm working with for that week. And I'll be sharing one today. And I'm going to start off with a short shamanic journey that I did last night. And in this journey, when I entered it, there was a, a pretty wild winter storm and there was a rabbit in front of me and asked me to follow it. And we went through the snow and then we came to a rabbit hole and we went down the rabbit hole and we landed at the bottom of this rabbit hole and kind of came out the other side. And when we entered the other side of the rabbit hole, which was also much like a metaphorical birth canal, it everything was calm and spring-like and there were fields of flowers surrounded by beautiful trees singing birds and then I was kind of waiting for something else to happen and nothing else really happened so I just kind of sat there in the field of flowers and then I asked spirit I said well what's down the rabbit hole as a rabbit hole can also be a, a metaphor for going into deeper research of something so all that I heard spirit say was Eden Eden is at the other side of the rabbit hole so last week I shared another journey in which the white Sophia dragon took me up to a little community up the canyon near where I live and that community is called Eden. So I think Spirit is again confirming like um, that this planet will eventually be moving back into its natural garden Eden state. And I felt compelled to look up the word Eden and there were several different takes on this word. Um, but I really like this definition a lot, and it, it's more of like a spiritual meaning of Eden. And this perspective of the, the definition of Eden says, The garden symbolizes the spiritual body in which man dwells when he brings forth his thoughts after the original divine ideas. This garden is the substance of God, or Eden, or state of perfect relation of ideas to being. The Garden of Eden is the Divine Consciousness. So now I want to get into my the interaction with my mom. So the morning of my mom's funeral is the first time that I, I could kind of hear her come to me. And I said, Mom, do you want, is there anything that you want me to share with people? Because we each had about a minute to speak at the funeral, all the kids. And she said, let's let's write a poem together. And I said, well, okay. And I, I've never like collaborated with a person in spirit with a poem before, but it was really interesting how it worked. So how it worked for me is I, I first I heard the title. And so I think she came up with the title and I was, and the title is given in honor. And I was like, oh, I will. I wonder how that's going to tie in with this poem and where, how this given in honor is going to going to work because I don't know what she's talking about and so I would hear her say a few lines and then that would be silence and then I would have to come up with a line <laughs> so that's kind of how we did this so I don't remember exactly who came up with what but it just felt like a very much of a flow of a collaboration with her 
And so I'll read that to you now. Given an honor. I have traveled many roads. I have come far and have carried many burdens and have seen much beauty. Each time I have experienced the range of human emotions, defeat, pain, and grief, joy, love, and the sweetness of life. Let none of these indulgences pass you by. Savor each one as your soul journeys forward. For the pain and joy work hand in hand in order to bring you to your highest potential. Nothing is in vain, nothing is for naught, nothing is forgotten. And when we journey back to the realms of peace and oneness, all is seen and remembered, and the circle of life continues in an eternal round, ebbing and flowing as the Creator has intended. I stand at the threshold of heaven and earth. I am here with you now, as my true self. I am given in honor, back to the realms of wholeness, to abide with the light and love from which I came. And you, my sweet family and friends, will also return to that oneness from which you came. But for now, let no experience go unacknowledged, for the precious learning that it is and allow your soul to soak up each moment of earthly experience, as this lifetime will be but a blink of an eye. This here and now is to be cherished for the fleeting moment in eternity that it is. Do not take this life, this fantastic opportunity, for granted. Savor each day, even in the depths of sorrow and the heights of joy. Savor each moment as a stepping stone back into the light of your true self. And always remember that each stone is given in honor as a gift to you from the Creator to assist you in becoming who you are meant to be as a reflection of the perfect divine love that is the God within all things. So after I read this poem, I, I had like a little stack of copies that I handed out to my family and the people that were there. Most of, it was very small, there was maybe like 30 people there. And it was outside, it was such a beautiful day, and it was such a beautiful service. And um, so when I passed out these poems, I noticed that some of the people right in front of me chose not to take one and pass it on. And it it was kind of painful to be rejected like that, you know, but um, I think that's part of today's uh, lesson that Mother Miriam kind of wanted to talk about. So um, I wanted to read her channeling and it's, it's a little bit about like when you don't feel accepted or, re or you feel kind of rejected by people who may not um, get you or understand you and another uh, movie that we saw this week kind of had to do with this topic a little bit too and if you're a Flannery O'Connor fan uh, you would should really watch this movie too but it's called Wildcat and Ethan Hawke directed it and Ethan Hawke's daughter is in it and she looks a lot like her mom Uma Thurman but the acting is great and it touches on a little bit about how she was rejected by her publishers and and we know now she's got like a huge cult following you know people just love her books but and then her mom would read her books and say why can't you write something that people would want to read or people would enjoy reading and at the beginning of the movie um, there's a quote and it, it talks about how she said that fiction a lot of people think that fiction is an escape from reality and that she didn't like that and she felt that fiction was actually a reflection of reality and the reality that she saw around her so some of her stories can actually be pretty dark because we are living in a world of duality and I my husband and I were watching this and we're like oh this <laughs> totally reminds us of our music too because it's not fun party pop music you know it's it's kind of um it can be serious at times and the lyrics can often reflect you know what I see happening in the world just like her stories can so um not everybody who is spiritual wants to make 
you know, super uplifting <laughs> poppy music or, you know, spiritual music or whatever. I mean, we, we have started doing meditation music and that is for that specific pur purpose, but our art reflects some of the darkness that we see in life. And so I had a client today that said, well, I, I really love heavy metal music. And I was like, well, great. You know that I make heavy music sometimes too. I love heavy music, not necessarily heavy metal, but I do enjoy heavier music sometimes. So you don't need to listen to a specific style of music to be a, a, a spiritual person. That really bothers me too, just like it does, did Flannery O'Connor. So anyway, I'm just going to get into this channeling from Mother Miriam and she touches on a few different things on transitioning and being triggered and then the, the energies of September a little bit. So enjoy. Behold, I come that humanity might find joy and that those who have the desire may find their way back into the light of oneness and unity. As your planet is swirling in a cacophony of division and separation energy, you may find this difficult at times. But settle into your true being as you merge with your higher self. Find a quiet place, a place of peace and solitude. This is helpful in finding your balance, beloved friends of the light. Make sure your ego is not ruling over your every emotion and choice. Take a step back from the materialism of your earth plane. Your soul wants to move back into harmony with nature and with the God force. It wants rest. It wants relief. Be patient as you begin to find your footing on this path back into balance. Old systems and ways of doing things are beginning to show their cracks. And as it has been said, this is indeed where the light is able to start coming through. Some of you are experiencing the transitioning of loved ones at an accelerated rate at this time. There are several layers of meaning to this occurrence. Some wish to exit and assist in the great shift of Earth from the other side. They have chosen before their birth as to when they would exit. Some wish to continue their soul development elsewhere, as the energy has become almost intolerable for them. Some have chosen to exit as a teaching moment for others as to what is harming the health of humanity and what is needing change. Some are simply ready for a season of rest. Some will choose to reincarnate at a later date. But remember, there is no death. Your loved ones are continuing on in their journey and are busy about their own path. They may be able to show themselves in some instances in different ways, through tokens you may recognize, feathers, butterflies, birds, animal encounters, a wind, a feeling, a thought, and in some cases even a message or a sighting. This is all to put you at ease as to their utter aliveness. Now I wish to address the energy of being rejected or triggered by others, even those close to you in familial relationships. We are at a point now in the process of ascension that all that is not resonance with new earth frequencies is being purged. When others trigger an unpleasant emotion within you, this is simply allowing you to learn how to stay in your truth and remain centered and grounded while releasing baggage that does not serve you. This does indeed take practice, and it is not always easy to react with kindness and love to someone who is disrespecting or rejecting you. This is where you relinquish control over another person's chosen actions, and you bring it back to your own reaction. For this is indeed what you do have choice and responsibility over. You may even make the choice with certain people who are consistently disrespecting you not to be in their field of energy very often. For there is a harvest at hand, and those who do not wish to come together in sovereignty, freedom, and unity may be staying in frequencies of being victimized, controlled, or dominated. Where a soul gravitates on the spectrum of frequencies is ultimately their choice 
and one cannot force another to choose sovereignty. You may find yourself at odds with others who in some cases may be close to you, and as this has been prophesied, allow others to make their choice. Stand in your own truth regardless of the choice of others. All will play out and land as it is meant to, for each soul is at different stages of evolution. However, we of the higher realms would also like to reiterate that revelations will continue as to the manipulation, corruption, and greed within the power structures that are not serving the highest good of the collective. As the fallen ones flail about with their last efforts to keep their control in place, they are working to take as many people with them as possible. They do this through lies, facades, mind manipulation, and the twisting of what is not of the light to seem as if it is serving you. All is upside down, but not for long, as the Creator has come to the point that extreme duality and enslavement will no longer be tolerated in the near future. The Book of Enoch speaks of such things, and we encourage all to take a look into its pages, for these pages foretell of the time that you are currently living in, my dear friends. This is why it has been removed from the so-called canonized scripts. I have chosen a card for you today, and I admonish you to stay in the light of your own power and creation, for you are capable of creating new realities as the force of God is with you. As our beloved Yeshua has said, the kingdom is within you. And so it is. I am Miriam, mother of Yeshua, bringer of truth and peace, bestower of wisdom and love. Thank you, Mother Miriam. So the card that she chose today is from the Psychic Tarot deck by John Holland. And it's number one awareness. It's the photo actually on this video. And I'll read it now. It says, this card is one of the key reminders that you already possess all the tools to guide and direct you in your life. Whether it's wisdom, intuition, psychic skill, creativity, self-motivation, love, willpower, physical ability, or just pure courage, they're all a part of you. Once you learn how to tap into them and use them, you'll be amazed by the power and effect they can have. You have the ability to allow the universe to work in partnership with you. Together, you can manifest change, whatever the desire may be, and bring about a positive outcome. This card represents your ability to create your own reality, to set ideas into motion and watch them grow. This card is often drawn when you're ready to switch direction, start a new project, or change careers. Now is the time to use positive thoughts, visualizations, and affirmations as you veer away from negativity. Knowledge is power and can lead to success. By having faith, keeping your willpower strong and directed, and by tapping into the tools that you possess, as well as calling on the magic from the universe, you can accomplish anything and everything you set out to do. And the traditional archetype in the tarot of this card would be the magician. So we are all the magicians. The kingdom is within. And then the crystal that I'm working with this week is angel phantom quartz. And when I looked it up, uh, the metaphysical meaning is it can help you reach higher levels of consciousness, gives clarity to your soul. And it's known to connect people with the angelic realm and it brings a divine direction in the life of the user or wearer. So thank you for being here today, and thank you for all your beautiful, heartfelt comments, uh, especially the condolences about my mother in the last video. I really appreciate all your sensitivity to the situation, and I'm actually doing pretty good. And if you enjoy the content that I provide here, it really helps my channel out to share this video with like-minded groups and people. Press the like button, leave a comment, uh, subscribe, and press the notification bell if you'd like to be reminded of my weekly videos. I usually make them on Sundays. So I'm sending you all love. Take care. We'll talk soon.